Well, hello there. Welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. Today I have something super interesting to show you. And uh, I don't know, I'm actually going to get started fairly quick. I'm just going to give you an introduction of what I'm going to try and what I, what I have here. And we'll, we'll get right, right to getting our hands dirty here. Now, what we can see here is uh, a board with an MSC430 sending step pulses to a DRB8818. Um, 8 degrees of micro stepping internal indexer 2.5 amp stepper driver and that DRB8818 is mounted into my stepper 8811 board but since it is uh, 8818 and 8811 are pin to pill compatible you can actually mount either device in there so that's fine and uh, I have connected a motor this stepper motor NEMA 23 size uh, and I'm going to be putting 2.5 amps, so I'm going to show you the 2.5 amps and that will be uh, coming out of a 24 volt power supply now there is nothing intriguing about this what I want to show you however is not the current but the effects of the current and not on the stepper but on the driver so let me do a little bit of a switch here alright here it is, I have to get very creative to get this puppy on top of uh, my device and then a camera on top of it so what you're looking at here is a thermal uh, sensor basically a thermal imaging sensor and what we're looking at on the uh, screen of this sensor is the DRB8818 subjected to 2.5 amps per phase while mounted on my two layer the stepper 8811 board so with two layers running at 2.5 amps the device runs at 75 degrees so I'm gonna cheat a little bit now and I'm gonna take the current to 3 amps the device is rated at 2.5 but the over current is above 3 so in theory I should be able to go to 3 amps alright we're at 3 amps DRB8818 is supplying 3 amps to my NEMA 23 stepper motor and I basically see 110 degrees that is actually 110 degrees Celsius, so I can boil water right on top of that chip. Now, um, we had around 75 at 2.5 amps, sine wave peak. At 3 amps, we have 110, so 110 is it's, it's kind of a bit. It's, uh, it's not something that you would want to run at for a very prolonged period of time. And also have under consideration that I am running this at an ambient of 25C so if for any reason this is in your garage or in your CNC equipment a 50C or higher that's not gonna bode well you're gonna run out of headroom and you're gonna start uh, reaching uh, over uh, temperature shutdown which is pretty much go it's going to destroy the, the integrity of your stepper actuation so 110 is, is not super desirable let's try something else and try our 2.5 amps and our 3 amps with a different board that I have just designed see what happens well behold my new design the AEMDL stepper 8818 board again this is just a name I mean you could put an 8811 here if you wanted to they are pin to pin compatible this is basically uh, a very similar board it's two layers but there is one difference, only one difference, and uh, I'll show that to you now. Well, here is the difference. The RB8818 running at 2.5 amps, same as before, except that I'm using a completely different board. Well, I just said there was uh, one difference, and that uh, the board was pretty much the same. So, let me stick to the facts. The board is a completely new design and is using a new technology which allows me to run the device way cooler even when I'm using the same current. Notice that I'm dealing here with something I will say obviously less than 40 degrees C. We had 75 before, now we have less than 40. Same current, same voltage, same stepper motor. What changes here is what I'm going to show you in a little bit. But first let's take it to 3 amps and see what happens. If you remember before I had 110 degrees at 3 amps with my stepper 8811 board, 2 layer board, and these were still 2 layers and I'm getting 40 degrees less. So what am I doing here? We'll see soon. 
All right, what we're seeing here is DRB8818 running two, uh, actually three amps per phase. Three amps, that is out of a 24 volt power supply. So pretty much the same setup that I had before. Same motor, same device, same voltage, same current. Uh, the board is different, a little bit different. Although there is one major difference which is causing the big difference in temperature. If you remember, I had 110 before, now I have, uh, it's basically like 42, now you may be thinking it's 47, but notice the 47 is actually on the resistor, not on the device. The device is around 42. So 110 at 3, uh, at 3 amps with the first board, 2 layer board, and now 42, 40 something degrees C anywhere in between 60 and 70 degrees difference with the new board what's the difference? what's the trick? am I cheating here? am I being deceitful? Uh, I'm actually playing a trick yes, uh, I wouldn't call it deception but there is a trick now before you call me a liar let me show you that in fact I have 3 amps this is the sine wave and I'm going to show you that's basically one amp per division and we have one two and three divisions so that's a three amp sine wave peak same signal that we had before with the same motor different board and I'm about to show you what the trick is it's a legal trick and that is that lovely heat sink you see on the bottom of the board and before I go on, let me thank my good friend Dean Gramanis from New York, who is the creator of this very innovative way of keeping our device cool. This allows us to run the device at higher currents than what the uh, manufacturer rated the device at. The device is rated at 2.5 amps. But with the heatsink, we can run cooler than the actual 2.5 amps without the heatsink at 3 amps that is quite significant so let me show you how this beauty works alright I have disconnected everything from our setup here and now I can show you what's going on this board has a lovely heat sink on the bottom side so you may, you may be asking why not put it on the top well the top is actually made of plastic which is very uh, it's not conductive uh, it has poor thermal impedance, which means that heat is not going to flow as fast as we want it to flow. But if we go through the bottom, that allows us to extract the heat from the actual source of the heat, which is the power pad. If you remember, this is a power pad device. Uh, so this heat sink is, uh, is great because it basically goes to the source. So let me show you how it interfaces to the source. I had to remove five screws to be able to remove the heat sink and uh, I'm removing it now. There is some thermal paste, excuse me, and uh, what you see here is what is called a power peg. This guy, made of copper, goes through the board and interfaces with the power pad. So the power pad is directly connected with the airfoil through the power peg. And that's why we can remove so much heat so quickly and maintain temperatures constrained to lower levels which allow us to run the device uh, more efficiently because there are less power losses, less temperature buildup, less uh, RDS on, which then basically implies less power dissipation so it is a win-win situation and that is how we can take this device which is ready for 2.5 amps when mounted on a two layer board we can take it to 3 amps thanks to the heat sink all right i hope you have enjoyed this short demo on how to take your drb8818 or any power pad device uh, to the extreme and run it cooler, more efficient, hopefully allowing you to drive your 
your great projects such as CNC machines, you know, routers, plasma cutters, 3D printers. This is a great cheat for all of that projects. So I wish you good luck and uh, tune for the next time to see what else we have coming.